I rise to speak uh, to the two amendments in this group in my name and also to make a couple of other comments um, on uh, other amendments in this group. And I'll begin by very strongly agreeing with the noble lady, Baroness Heyman of Ullock, uh, in strongly supporting the noble Lord Lord Shipley's 69. Um, this um, really, I mean, I'll be very interested to hear the noble Lord, the Minister's explanation for the reasons for this, um, but an undue dominance of one party in committees is obviously a clear, prob a clear problem, and the deletion um, that the government is proposing, really, it's very hard to imagine a justification for it. And I also want to agree with um, 114 and 120 about the CCA having to approve the appointment and powers of deputy mayors. I think that's an obvious point of democratic scrutiny. Uh, but coming particularly to the, um, my two amendments on this, first of all, that clause 25 not stand part of the bill. And what this would do is delete the power for the Secretary of State to establish an elected mayor for a CCA. Um, and 113 requires a referendum for an elected mayor. Now, I think what we're talking about here, as I was talking about in the previous group in which I was speaking, is democracy. And we have seen from several sides of your Lordship's house a real desire to impose a model of governance that's known as the strong leader model. We need to have one person there as a figurehead who makes the decisions. Now, as a Green, I'm fundamentally opposed to that model. I think that's a model that is very bad for um, uh, democracy. It's very bad for the quality of decision making, the quality of the governance, independent of whatever the ideology might be. Um, and I also think that um, it discourages a broader involvement in politics, which should be the very foundation of our democracy. And of course, what we've also seen in the context of this is the election system for elected mayors, which the government chose to unilaterally change um, under the Electoral Bill Now Act, um, despite considerable opposition. So I'm not standing up and saying, as Greens, we're going to write into this bill that there is no right to have an elected mayor. What I'm saying is people should have the right to decide whether they want an elected mayor. So it's very possible to imagine a community, an area, a region that says we want a CCA, but we don't want an elected mayor. And what I'm seeking to do is to ensure, however you write it into bill, that people have that choice and that genuine choice is available to them. And with, and I'm afraid, you know, this is something that I, I believe my understanding is that uh, the Labour Party as well as the Conservative Party has tended to be in favour of this strong leader model, but that's a model to which I am fundamentally opposed. But I'm just saying that people should be allowed to have a choice whether, whether or not to have that model applied to them. Uh, and as in the previous group, I referred to the fact that in a number of cases um, around uh, England, where people have had it imposed to them, as it was imposed on the people of, of Sheffield, um, when they got the chance, they got rid of it, as indeed the people of Bristol did also. And just to answer the noble lady Baroness Heyman of, of Alex's question about cost, um, I can cite the figures for um, Sheffield, um, and basically it's using it as an add-on to another election, so if it's conducted at the same time as another election. For Sheffield, which is the fifth largest city, it's probably reasonable to consider the figures are more or less um, comparable. You're looking at about £170,000 for Sheffield for the fifth largest city when it's conducted at the same time as another election. That was a couple of years ago, but that gives you a ballpark sense of what it would cost. And I don't believe that that sort of figure, proportionately, is too high a cost to apply for democracy. <laughs>